December 2023. Let your mind heal your body. Chimuna Rangachari shares examples of how, often, the physical afflictions we suffer have their roots in our mental state. Through a proper understanding and application of this phenomenon, we can live a healthy and disease-free life. It has now come to our knowledge that many ailments are caused by our thoughts and corresponding emotions. The good news is that we can change our emotions with our thoughts and thus keep away ailments. Let us explore some of these ailments to see how our health can indeed be in our control. Diabetes In my family and circle of friends, there are many who are diabetic. A common pattern is observed in them, they often feel that they are not loved by their family. One of my friends has two sons, both of whom are loving to her and their wives too, of course, but my friend feels that more importance is given to the wives. She keeps showering gifts on them but feels that they are not appreciated. This may sound like a soap opera, but the fact is that every visit of hers causes stress to the entire family. She felt unloved when she visited the home of her sons, and this was reflected in her sugar levels. She gradually accepted and changed her unfounded behavior and her sugar levels improved. A lot of studies now show that diabetes is linked with feeling unloved and lonely in life. Perhaps, in India, it is increasing because of children living away from their families, sometimes even abroad. The pattern abroad too is that there is an increase in loneliness due to social circles becoming less prevalent. With more community programs, the situation is becoming better. The late Louise Hay, in You Can Heal Your Life, says that diabetes is caused by a great need for control, deep sorrow, and a feeling of no sweetness left in life. The affirmation she recommends is this, this moment is filled with joy. She asks all to experience life by seeing love everywhere and sharing it. Thyroid disease Thyroid disease is linked to finding and expressing one's voice. My cousin married a Christian, and though she tried her best to integrate, she could never express herself completely in both homes. Another relative of mine had a stammering issue and could never speak aloud for a long time. This gave him a complex, especially in childhood. Both of them suffered from thyroid disease, but after they resolved their issues by accepting themselves as they were, their thyroid condition gradually became better. Lalita Atam Singh lived in London while her late mother lived in Mumbai. During one of her visits to Mumbai, her mother was diagnosed with mouth cancer. She was shocked and did all she could to get as much help from doctors and hospitals, but no one had a long-term solution for this disease. She then took on the role of a caregiver to help her mother, making sure she got all the palliative care at home with limited and poorly trained external help from hospitals and agencies. However, the trauma and helplessness in such a situation took its toll on her. But through all this, she remained serene and stoic knowing it would be useless to express her concerns to anyone, thus suppressing all her fears and anxiety. This manifested as hyperthyroidism, which she has now managed to heal through medication as well as venting about all the stress she had been through, to family and friends. The thyroid is in the throat, and it is through this organ that we express our innermost strength of will and the ability to follow our dreams, and share our innermost desires of the heart. It is the center of demonstrating our choice and saying what we wish to say. When one's ability to speak up and to be heard has been shut down, blocked or restricted, the thyroid, which influences metabolic rate, protein synthesis, and intellectual development, gets badly affected. Louise Hay asks everyone to express themselves and not suppress anything for this is how thyroid problems can be resolved. Migraine I had a friend who kept a perfect home but would always suffer from migraine, especially during festivals and parties. No house help stuck around for long because she was obsessed with keeping the house spick and span. Even her family was scared of her, and many of her friends avoided her. Fortunately, her neighbor, a counselor, counseled her to not be excessively fastidious. Gradually, she changed her behavior, and her migraines improved. Her life became better as she accepted all situations. This did take a while, but it worked. According to Louise Hay, again, the solution is love and trusting the flow of life. Men suffer more from heart attacks as they prefer to bottle up their pain inside themselves. Heart ailments 
my late cousin, a sports journalist, had a sudden heart attack during one of his travels, after he lost his mother to whom he was very close, in a fire accident. We have often seen in many movies that someone gets a sudden heart attack on receiving shocking news. This may sound dramatic, but a heart ailment does get triggered by a shocking event. Louise Hay too says the heart is affected mainly by shocks and stress. Is it not true then that we need to express ourselves and our traumas to heal? The fact that many youngsters are having sudden heart attacks, perhaps, points to the fact that there is too much pressure on them to perform, leading to stress. Though not spoken about much, the heart is indeed the barometer of our inner self too. Therefore, it is indeed important to keep it healthy by connecting to our inner self always, in whichever way we deem fit. As it has been repeated many times in literature in a different context, love is indeed the tonic to keep a heart healthy. The solution then is to always affirm that we are not alone and are being looked after in the journey of our lives. Allergies Allergies are triggered when we are not comfortable with what is around us. My daughter used to always develop rashes on her skin during her exams, making it evident that she was facing stress. It has been seen that allergies are triggered when one is not comfortable with one's surroundings. Dr. Meenaxi Jain, a homeopath from Mumbai, has seen that many of her patients who are newly married and not accepted by all in their new homes suffer from skin allergies. She has also found that the repression of sexual desires often causes these allergies as the skin is the first place from which the body conveys underlying conditions. She heals people from allergies by asking them to express who they are without hesitation, under all circumstances, and has seen a lot of results using this approach. Asthma Asthma, according to Louise Hay, is a result of suffocating love and not having the freedom to breathe easy. My late aunt, who suffered from asthma, faced such issues in her family, who did love her but controlled what she did, what she wore, whom she met, and where she went. No wonder then that she suffered from asthma as she did not have any freedom in life. Despite being a talented singer, she was not allowed to sing in public. She passed away a sad soul. According to Hari Pai, an Indian healer from Goa, asthma is often triggered during a full moon or Purnima. He suggests chanting mantras, while Louise Hay recommends affirming that one is free in the journey of life. We could do both to keep ourselves healthy. Obesity I have an obese cousin who could never give up eating oily food. She was teased in her childhood both for her weight and grades. This created a vicious circle, resulting in her eating even more. She was very loving to all children on social occasions but kept away from adults. By God's grace, she once went with a friend to an Ayurvedic hospital to be of some support to a friend who was grappling with cancer. This made her concentrate more on the other. While feeding her friend a healthy diet, she too would consume the same. With this, she regained both her self-esteem and health to a large extent. Cancer My late sister-in-law had a tough life, she raised both her young girls on her own due to the untimely death of her husband. She was very loving to all of us and raised her girls very well. When one of them got married and was abused by her husband, she went into a very sorrowful state and was then diagnosed with leukemia, blood cancer, of an advanced state. She passed away before her children got happily settled in life later. The one with the abusive husband got divorced and remarried, and the other one too is happily married. Both thank the divine and the blessings of their mother from another realm. My late aunt, who suffered from asthma, faced such issues in her family, who did love her but controlled what she did, what she wore, whom she met, and where she went. No wonder then that she suffered from asthma as she did not have any freedom in life. Despite being a talented singer, she was not allowed to sing in public. She passed away a sad soul. Satish Sharma, a bureaucrat from Delhi who took premature retirement to pursue his interests, lost his mother to cancer and soon after, at the age of 50, was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer, a rare type of cancer in men. He was operated upon and underwent chemotherapy and radiotherapy for a while. Meanwhile, he looked for other natural treatments. Subsequently, he stopped radiation and chemotherapy, and is now completely healthy and works as a health coach guiding others in their lifestyle choices. He is clear that everyone needs to find a purpose in life and enjoy it to the maximum extent to remain healed. Louise Hay, 
herself a cancer survivor, attributes deep grief and resentment to cancer and asks everyone to heal by using the mantra of forgiveness, living in the present, and love. She strongly recommends keeping away from negative thoughts like anger and guilt. This certainly seemed to work in her case. Maya Runiza Sutarwala is a hypnotherapy quantum physics energy abundance coach from Mumbai who uses several modalities to reconstruct diseased cells. She works on healing the biocellular memories of cells and transforming the past erroneous memories and programs to heal her clients. Maya Runiza does this using energy healing methods, whereby the disease gets arrested with the change in patterns, as every cell has a stipulated time frame of life. Some cells die every three days, seven days, or even six months. This depends on each cell's lifespan. She has healed many by using this method. Some cancer patients avoid radiation or chemotherapy with her help. The patient is treated with a regimen of alternative thinking, exercise, diet, and a total lifestyle change, following which there is a transmutation of cells in the body system. We can see that when one changes their lifestyle, attitude, and thinking to healthier living, with meditation and eliminating incorrect actions and thoughts, there is a significant shift towards abundance. Here, being abundantly happy and believing in healing the body, mind, and soul is of vital importance. Healing is indeed possible. Everything, including something as serious as cancer, can be healed when we work on ourselves in body, mind, and spirit. In the Indian context, Yagnas and prayers do the same thing due to the power of our mind and soul. Whenever there is a health crisis, you will often find pujas and chanting being held by families and even colonies and communities. This does help in making one's mental health stronger. In the context of reasons for our ailment, it makes sense to know about them and introspect, denial will never help us. We need to accept our limitations and work on removing them from our soul's imprint. This is a process which, usually, never happens overnight. However, it does make us holistically healthy if we keep working on it and emerge victors instead of remaining victims. Ultimately, our Creator wants us to keep improving in the school of life, ailment or not. Jamuna Rangachari, the former assistant editor of Life Positive, has authored two books for children, and compiled and interpreted teaching stories 1 and 2 for Life Positive. Write to her at jamanarangachari at gmail.com.